Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I did it again. <laughs> what did I do? I went ahead and ordered some unknown books from the internet again. So if you haven't seen it, definitely go check out my unboxing video where I purchased some mystery thriller suspense books off of eBay. I got 20 hardcovers for $20 in that deal and it was a disaster. And I don't I don't like feeling as though I haven't succeeded. <laughs> I don't like feeling as though I haven't accomplished something. So, I decided to check out what other resources there are out there for buying inexpensive books. Not to mention with targeted advertising these days, as soon as I bought that lot of books off of eBay, I kept getting all of these notifications and all of these advertisements for a place called the Book Bundler. Uh, the Book Bundler will curate a big box of books and send it to you based on genre and format. So you can order children's books, you can order trade paperbacks, mass market paperbacks, hardcovers, all in different genres. They have rare books. You can buy books by color at the book bundler. So if you're one of those people that um, uses books in an interesting way for interior design or decor, the book bundler is probably a good place to go to get a big bunch of books of a certain color. And so I gave in and I purchased some books. Now, to be honest with you, I know I spent, I spent about $30. I think I got 10 hardcover mystery thriller suspense books for $25 plus tax or shipping or something like that. But I spent around $30 for half of what I received the first time. So it was more expensive and it was less books. Now, my theory is that you get what you pay for. And because I spent more money on less product, that product will be of better quality. But here's the box. I haven't opened it. Again, we're opening it together. As you can see, the dog is super excited. Okay, well, unfortunately, this isn't going to be a huge surprise to me because they were all sent bindings up. So like, or, um, what do you call it? The, this. They were all put in the box this way. I can see what all of the books are. But anyways, let's take them out and I will show them to you. I can tell you already that they look like each book looks like it's of better quality. The books that I received from eBay were guaranteed to be in fair or better condition. These look pretty much like they're good or better. But um, <laughs> the first book in here is Lillian Jackson Bronze, The Cat Who Went Bananas. This is an entire series of mystery novels all to do with a cat. I have never read a single one of them and I... I'm willing to bet the farm that this is not the first one. <laughs> I mean, considering there's like an entire list of the cat books here already, this one is probably, you know, 30th or so. It's book 27, so I was not far off. Now, those of you who know a little bit more about this series of mysteries, maybe you can tell me if I can benefit at all from reading the 27th book before I've read books one through 26, I have no idea. I'm guessing that they're all about different cats, not about the same cat, which would lead me to believe that I could just randomly start with book 27, but I do not know. Uh, taking place in the town of Pickaxe, I'm wondering if that's a recurring setting. Um, but a visiting out of town actor ends up dead and a rare book is stolen. The cat is a Siamese named Coco. Uh, next we have the Beothuk saga. 
This is by Bernard Asinui. Asinui. I don't know how to pronounce that. And I did actually take a pause and try to find a way to pronounce this and no, no luck. Now, <laughs> the Beothuk saga is about an indigenous culture native, I believe, to Newfoundland, Canada. I'm not positive about that. It begins a thousand years ago in the time of the Vikings in Newfoundland. It is crammed with incidents of war and peace, with fights to the, to the death and long nights of lovemaking, and with accounts of the rise of local clan chiefs and the silent fall of great distant empires. Okay, they were the native original people of Newfoundland, the first North American natives encountered by European sailors. I'm not sure how this is a mystery thriller or suspense. I mean, this first of all, it doesn't even sound like fiction. But maybe, I mean, the author is an anthropologist and maybe he created a fictitious story out of... I don't... I. Again, this is why you don't buy books off of the interwebs, unknown books, mystery books. But at least this book contains people and things I've, un I've heard of. James Patterson, Unlucky 13 with Maxine Petro. A few of my subscribers out there know how I feel about books with pictures on the back. Uh, the Women's Murder Club is stalked by a killer with nothing to lose. Following a San Francisco detective, Lindsay Boxer. I mean, number one, I'm not really overly attracted to reading James Patterson novels. I wouldn't be opposed to giving one a chance. But if I do, it's probably not going to be book 13 out of 20. Because... A lot of stuff could happen to Detective Lindsay in book 1 through 12. Books 1 through 12. <sighs> Alright, this one I haven't heard of before, but um, <laughs> at this point that's a promising thing. Um, the Comfort of Lies. This is by Randy Susan Myers. Best-selling author of The Murderer's Daughters. No clue. Let's uh, look this one up, shall we? Not rated well. Three and a half stars on Amazon. I mean, it actually, this, this actually, it's not rated well, but it sounds interesting. So it's, it's three women. Um, Tia, who falls in love with a married man and gets pregnant and then puts their child up for adoption. Carolyn or Caroline, a woman who adopts a child to please her husband and Juliet wife of the man who fathered Tia's child. So basically Juliet is going to discover the affair, discover the child. Like, I mean, it sounds interesting. These narratives of these three women, it's just not rated well. I'm not sure. Why? I mean, it has more five stars than one stars. <laughs> so there's that. I don't know. I mean, this this could potentially be interesting. I'm willing. Never heard of it or the author, but more willing than the others that I've unboxed thus far. Uh, next, we have Kindred and Death. This is by J.D. Robb. This is the In Death series featuring heroine Eve Dallas. This is not anywhere near the first book. I've only read the first book in the series. And I'm not saying I'm not interested. Oh, it's book 29. Um, I'm not saying that I'm not interested in reading more, but I mean, I would, I would, I would conceivably have to hold on to this book for 28 other books. And this one actually is not in very good shape, as you can see. I'm a little bit, I probably shouldn't have revealed that person's address. Interestingly enough, I'm in Michigan. This book was previously owned by someone in Michigan, but the books were mailed from Virginia. So that's kind of interesting. 
But Kindred and Death, I don't even want to read the, the synopsis of this book because it tends to give away information that could have happened in the previous 28 books. And that would reveal spoilers. Um, next, we have Steve Martini, a novel called Double Tap. This says a Paul Mandriani novel. Steve Martini obviously is a recognizable name, but I couldn't tell you much about him other than it's kind of like international slash espionage stuff, I believe. This is likely not the first book. Book eight. Uh, this is book eight in a series about a lawyer, an attorney. Attorney Paul Mandriani defends a highly decorated soldier who is on trial for murder and unwittingly steps into a maze of secrets and lies that the government and even his client would rather leave hidden and undisturbed. Subject matter is not at all appealing to me legal slash political slash international thriller not interesting in addition to being book eight of this attorney's entire story so okay next we have a book called the night strangers a genre defying novel uh this is by chris Bojalian, 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 something. <sighs> Sorry, Chris. Okay, The Night Strangers. In a dusty corner of a basement in a rambling Victorian house in northern New Hampshire, a door has long been sealed shut with 39 six inch long carriage bolts. <laughs> we might have something here. The home's new owners are Chip and Emily Linton and their twin 10 year old daughters. Together, they hope to rebuild their lives after Chip, an airline pilot, has to ditch his 70-seat regional jet in Lake Champlain after double engine failure. Unlike the Miracle on the Hudson, however, most of the passengers die on impact or drown. The body count? 39. A coincidence not lost on Chip when he discovers the number of bolts in that basement door. Poignant? powerful ghost story it's another three and a half star book it has more five stars than any other rating but it has a lot of one stars like it has 32 per, 32 percent of the ratings are five star and then four star three star two star and one star ratings are all pretty much tied between like 15 and 20 percent so Someone says very disturbing. Someone says very disappointed. Some says messy. But it's like, and someone says, you'll never look at a greenhouse the same way. <laughs> we'll see, right? Oh boy. Okay, I don't, I don't mean oh boy in a bad way. Just oh boy. Patricia Cornwell, Book of the Dead. Um, don't know this particular book, have never read this author, but obviously you don't read thrillers and not know who this individual is. Book 15 of the Scarpetta series. The Book of the Dead is the morgue log, the ledger in which all cases are entered by hand. For case Scarpetta, however, it is about to acquire a new meaning. Fresh from her bruising battle with a psychopath in Florida, well, thanks for letting me know what happens in book 14, moving to the historic city of Charleston, South Carolina, she opens a unique private forensic pathology practice, one in which she and her colleagues offer expert crime scene investigation and autopsies to communities lacking local access to competent death investigation and modern technology. I'm not going to lie, like... The content or the subject matter I'm on board with, like, like a book, like, you know, CSI meets Bones meets whatever. Um, I like that kind of stuff. But again, it's book 15 of something. And I just, 
Oh, look. I have another Patricia Cornwell, cause of death. It's another K. Scarpetta novel. Let's see if we can find out which one. I shouldn't touch my face with these unknown books. That's gross. Book seven. So I have book seven and I have book 15. Of the same series. With the same forensic pathologist person. One more book, which might not be so bad. Nora Roberts, The Search. It's a chunker. To most people, Fiona Bristow seems to have an idyllic life. A quaint house on an island off Seattle's coast, a thriving dog training school, and a challenging volunteer job performing canine search and rescue. Not to mention her three immensely loyal labs, but Fiona got to this point by surviving a nightmare. Several years ago, she was the only survivor of a serial killer. A madman who stalked and abducted young women, strangled them, and left them buried with a red scarf on their bodies. As authorities were closing in on the red scarf killer, he shot and killed Fiona's cop fiance and his canine partner. I feel like that might have been in a book. <laughs> and it just, I feel like it just might have spoiled it for me. Let me see if this is part of a series. Nora Roberts is J.D. Robb, by the way, for those of you who don't know. And, oh, hi. This is a four and a half star book. 4.6 stars. Huh. It doesn't imply that it's part of any sort of series. So that's good. It says dog lovers. You'll love this book. I'm a dog lover. 77% of the ratings are five stars. Um, which is difficult to trust because when you have a name like Nora Roberts or you have a name like Stephen King or you have a name, you know, by the time this book comes along, Nora Roberts has probably amassed a gigantic... Like, this is also by Nora Roberts. So, I mean, <laughs> fans are rating this book, and they're rating this book very, very, very highly. Um, and I wonder if just part of that is loyalty to the author. But anyway. Um, but Fiona found peace. She was a survivor of a serial killer, but it says she finds peace until the day Simon Doyle barrels up her drive, desperate for her help. He is the reluctant owner of an out-of-control puppy, foisted upon him by his mother. Jaws has eaten through Simon's house, and he's at his wit's end. This sounds like Turner and Hooch. To Fiona, Jaws is nothing she can't handle. Simon is another matter. A newcomer to the Orcas Islands, he is rugged and intensely private artist known for creating exquisite furniture. Simon never wanted a puppy, and he most definitely doesn't want a woman. Yeah, so I'm not going to pretend that I know a ton about Nora Roberts because I don't. But I would say, you know, a lot of her books are romantic suspense, like this one. It says a copycat killer um, comes out of the woodwork while she's teaching Simon how to be a dog owner. Um, and it turns into that. So that was, this is, this is the last book and probably the one I'm most happy to have, but I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Like I spent $30 on Nora Roberts, the search, and then two books that I'm two low rated books that I've never heard of that just sound a little bit promising. What this boils down to is $30 for three books that I would never walk into a store and purchase ever. So it's always a risk. Obviously, sometimes it pays off. I'm assuming sometimes it pays. I haven't really felt the payoff of this yet, but you know, just be aware that these services are out there. The book bundler, for example, 
while maybe not great for a reader like myself who wants to actually find books to read. <laughs> Sounded terrible. The Book Bundler also does children's books, including board books. Um, you know, if you're a teacher or a child care provider of any kind and you want a cheap way to stock a children's library, you know, the book bundler might be the answer for something like that. Or if you have any kind of like community gathering place, be it, you know, assisted living or a community center in general, or, you know, you want to offer free books to read or to take or something like that. I mean, that's where I think something like the book bundler would come in handy. I have to say like for the most part, these are in decent shape. They are of decent quality. That was not true when I bought the books off of eBay. So I did pay a little extra and got that. I will also say that I've heard of the majority of these authors or series. Also not the case when I purchased off eBay. So Book Bundler was more expensive. I, th I don't think it's nearly as risky, um, especially if you're not necessarily trying to hone in on books that are your specific taste. If you just want to have a general pool of books for whatever reason, for other people to peruse or pick up if they're interested, then it's a good idea. But I think thank you Sullivan I think that I'm gonna stick to like specifically buying my own titles and not leave it up to anyone in any warehouse to decide what I'm going to read so uh, again thank you for participating in this with me let me know if you like Cornwell Patterson cats that do stuff um, because I would be willing to treat these like unhaul books. So, um, yeah, let me know what you think of these weird experiments. Let me know if you're likely to do something like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon. <laughs>